folks just entered yellowstone national park i'm going to show you the sign once these other folks start stop taking pictures but that's where we're at yeah welcome to yellowstone national park my friends we'll come up here see if we can get a tune out of this trombone see how much we owe I have no idea what to expect annual pass 70 so 35 i gotta pay right here folks all right folks so it's good until the 18th and i'm loose in yellowstone national park i'm going to yellowstone lake first and then i'm gonna read all this literature and see what's going on animals are dangerous never see what Yellowstone has to offer us listen I come here to see wildlife not listen to fucking COVID-19 fucking propaganda Yellowstone turn that shit off that was Sylvan Pass elevation 8300 feet it's nice and cold up here Folks, what a great place to take a break here on the lake. Look how clear that water is. Folks, that is that is so clear. You know, let me put my hand in it here. See how cold. Oh, that's nice. That's real nice. Yeah. So here we are, Yellowstone National Park, Yellowstone Lake, here in Wyoming. Wow. All right, next stop. Might be old faithful. Yeah, everybody's pulling over to see what. Is it a bear? Is it a moose? They're up on the binos. The Continental Divide, my friends. 7.4 miles from Old Faithful Road, about nine miles out from Old Faithful. A little bit of live traffic here. But check that out, Old Faithful, keep right. Bumper to bumper to bumper traffic backed up, trying to get out of this mess. That's not good. Left lane, Old Faithful in, store and gas. Hopefully, that traffic has died down by the time I pull out of here. Okay, so guys are parking visitor center straight ahead. All right, folks, here we go. Walking up to Old Faithful. Probably this big camera, so I'm kind of zoom in, get a little bit better photography. But this place is packed out. And coming out of here, it's a damn traffic jam. A lot of folks here today. Where do you go? Hard left to hard right to try to find a spot to film this thing. Uh, maybe hard right. Alright, so now we just wait. Is this thing on a schedule? I don't know. There we go.
Nathan, did it see how long it lasts? couple minutes we wait about an hour you know if you come all the way here wait it out and watch it it's worth the wait pound of sand in my big camera now warm and tense right here so when it's cold you can get in these tents well, folks I realize that when this thing lets out it's like a concert letting out Everybody's making a mad rush for the cars and then there's gonna be a big ass backlog trying to get out up there. That's what I saw when I came in here. My perception of Old Faithful was gonna be, you know, me, two other people sitting on a ridge line watching this thing. I did not realize there was gonna be a thousand people here. But it's a beautiful day in the summer. Folks been locked down. Maybe 2% of the people here wearing masks people enjoying themselves living life that's the way it should be but realize there's a line for the bathroom the line at the restaurant they say they got gas up here but I would hate to try to get it because I think there'd be a line there as well but again if you filled up like I told you to fill up in uh, where was that Cody I think that's where I told you to fill up if you filled up there you should have enough gas to get out of here, but there is a gas station here according to the sign. All right, folks, back to the F-22, headed north towards Big Sky, yeah, Big Sky, Montana. All right, so let me tell you about my experience at Old Faithful. Right, Cause I don't know if you heard me coming through. Yeah, the, the wind is just kicking up up here. It's a beautiful, hot, sunny day wind is blowing okay was it worth it because I had a, I heard a lot of people say that wasn't worth it you know you sit around for an hour and a half waiting 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 and you see some water gush up from the ground for about five minutes for me it was worth it it was worth it you know it's a uh, you know you're just watching nature and Plus, you've heard about Old Faithful your entire life if you've grown up here in the United States. So for me, it was worth it. If you come to Yellowstone, bring your ass over here, wait it out. It takes like an hour and a half between eruptions. I think that's the time time hack. And you realize it's crowded as hell. If you don't get here early or right after it erupts, you're not gonna get a seat on a bench. I was just sitting on the ground over there and you see this madhouse of people trying to get out of here. It's like getting out of a concert. Was the concert worth it? Yeah. So you just have to exercise some patience. Just chill out, relax, and enjoy the experience. But if you're in a rush or in a hurry to get somewhere and you come by here and invest a couple hours to see that five minute, well, it's probably not if you're in a hurry. But if you come to Yellowstone, why get in a hurry? So it'll probably be 30 minutes or an hour before I get out of here and get back to that road. But you know what? I'm here. I saw it. I've seen Old Faithful erupt. Got it on video, some photos. It's all good. Now, after about an hour sitting in this traffic, I'll probably be cussing it, but... Um, that's my assessment so far. You come here, just go. 
you know one thing i heard that was just this one you know in my mind I'm like dude you're a fucking idiot this jackass was yelling at his kid about eight year old kid get your mask on i said get your mask on i'm like shut the fuck up yelling at that poor child because he forgot to put his mask on or he wasn't wearing his fucking mask properly you know dickhead go back to your fucking basement watch cnn and keep your fucking ass at home matter of fact when you're at home wear a fucking mask how about that dickhead out here screaming at a poor at a poor eight-year-old child just because he didn't fucking wear his goddamn mask like these fucking idiots have programmed you to do fucking yelling at his kid man big fuck you to that guy whoever the fuck you were <laughs> all right over to the left side of the aircraft was the geyser grill and there's a line to get in there so let me just reiterate that at least the day that i am here there's a line for everything exercise some patience talk about just a quick general assessment of yellowstone now hear me out don't just listen to my first words and let me let me let me give you my assessment and explain yellowstone is a beautiful place it's absolutely beautiful with natural beauty um i mean the scenery is beautiful but here's the downside. If you can see outside the aircraft, what do you see all around you? What do you, what do you see everywhere? You see vehicles, you see people, you see RVs. So you're looking at the natural beauty with crowds. I mean, every, everywhere you look, whether it's you know going to the waterfalls, going to these geysers, um, there's folks everywhere. Now, granted, this is a, a beautiful day uh, here in the summer. I don't know if this is normal crowds or less crowds because of you know this this SARS coronavirus two shit. I don't know if this less or more. I mean, a lot of the campgrounds I've been to over from New Mexico up this way, they've been packed out. That parking lot is packed out right up here. It's all packed out. This is Midway Geyser Basin people are waiting to get in so my experience with Yellowstone is it's beautiful but it's like I'm at a fucking amusement park that there's so many people here and in 10 miles turn left onto entrance road you know those numbers of vehicles and people clash with nature so absolutely I would come here you know to see to see the sights but I would make it, for me, I would like make it a two-day trip. I'd come here for a couple days, hit the key spots. And if I had 10 days, I would find one of those campsites like I showed you in a previous video. That's off the beaten path, only a few people know about. And, you know, it's a small place. Um, so if there are people there, there's more, no more than a dozen folks there. Like that campsite over there, picnic site, packed out. Can't even get a table over there. For me, that's not that's not meshing with nature and being in nature. You know, for me, I, and I grew up on a dirt road where when I went in the woods, there wasn't nobody in the woods but me. And that's why I really liked a lot of those places in northern New Mexico, in the in the Santa Fe National Forest, because I was up there. I was the only guy I saw. You know, only person at the trailhead, only car parked at the trailhead, only person I saw on the trail was me. I come back, still the only car there. And campsites, you know, it's just not a lot of people. A lot of people don't know about them. They're off the beaten path. And they're not commercialized. So I'm glad I came to Yellowstone, but I did not expect the crowds. I guess I should have. So if I had 10 days, I'd rather find a little campsite at the end of a dirt road and only people know about by word of mouth or like really digging on the internet. If there are people at the campsite, we well throw, uh, throw a backpack on, hike out two, three, four, five miles, set up your camp, and now you're, there's nobody around you. That's being in nature for me. But seeing nothing but wall-to-wall -wall RVs, uh, you know, just kind of takes away from it. 
but again beautiful country beautiful country nature with crowds that's sort of my assessment let me know what you think down in the comments maybe you agree maybe you disagree like right over here that parking lot is absolutely packed there are people waiting to get in here nothing but big ass rvs over there i don't even know what that attraction is and i'm not going to find out because i can't fucking get in there i mean look at that people fucking holding in a holding pattern just to find a parking spot i ain't got time for that shit not when i'm going to see nature there's a walkway out there it's more more geysers what have you it's absolutely beautiful but i'm going to enjoy the view out the side of this uh, f-22 I'm not pulling in there. I'm not fighting the crowd to find a damn parking spot. I'm just going to keep trucking. That's my assessment of Yellowstone. The aircraft got a bunch of people pulled over. Binoculars, uh, cameras. And we've got some buffalo out there. Bison, bison, bison. What do you say? You call it bison? Buffalo. I really don't know the difference. And got a badass looking chick right there and some spandex. My goodness! Coming across this little beautiful creek. I was looking over at them buffalo and then I saw spandex. All of a sudden, nature went out the window and nature came in the window. You know what I mean? Over to the left side of the aircraft, looks like we got a buffalo or a bison that's loose, gnawing on that pine tree. And that's basically what the holdup is. Everybody's stopping to take pictures. There you go. He's over there eating the damn bark off that pine tree over there. That big fella. Cowboy just sitting over there watching the watching the water. Back there, I just passed a couple vehicles. I've, I've seen them before. They like these six by six. They're military looking vehicles, but they're basically bug out campers. It looks like a military big, you know, it's even painted like a shade of gray. And they're back there. I don't know how much those things cost. They're probably pretty damn expensive, but from, you know, from what I've seen, people use them as a bug out type vehicle. So they're, they're riding around using their, their bug out tank RV. What's that from that movie Stripes, the EM? can't remember em26 project the em76 whatever the hell it is i mean it's cool if you got money to dump in those things but you know you're rolling through yellowstone burning about four miles to the gallon if that hey you got the money roll in it man i'm riding this raft four i could probably go almost as many places as that big bug out thing can Maybe not, because it's a two-wheel drive. A little bitty sign on the side of the road. A little brown sign that said, Welcome to Montana. Montana, my friends. Looks like we're saying goodbye. Yellowstone National Park. So here's the entrance from the Montana side. So part of Yellowstone is in Montana. I don't know how much of it, but I saw a sign that said, Welcome to Montana. Now I exited the gate about a mile away. in Montana for more than 10 minutes. I hear Cougar Creek and a little fox just crossed the road in front of me. Fucking Montana is beautiful.